future version of Jeremy here letting you know that this bonus episode was heard first on our Patreon. If you want early access to all of our content and to be among the first to listen to bonus episodes like this one, head over to our Patreon. That's patreon.com slash pod. It's also in the description and support the show. This truck's so weak. I mean, come on, bro, put your back in come it. On. Mom had to get a new ass because the old one had a crack in it. That's a great bar. You should clap for it. Bubble button, I'm attacking it. Everyone's kicking Drake's ass, but he'd prefer if we were smacking it. Got bear guns, I'm a black pop. Hit the noise when my boys made the wax pop. Hit him in the rear, now everyone near, so they just heard back shots. Don't act like you don't I know my me. brother, it's OP. But instead of getting cross, why not just turn the other cheek? Put your hands on your knees. Let the bullet breathe. Started from the bottom, guess that was your surgeon's brief. That bar was a bit mean. You know I got rough on thick cream. Drake about to get buried like an eaten mess with the whipped cream. Unknown P, untouchable, feel like the roof of a cysteine. And Drizzy won't like this track because I couldn't get the bars in the 16. Welcome to this special bonus Head in the Office episode. That's right. We're breaking down the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. By popular demand, we're here today and we're happy to be joined. By one of our friends and someone you probably know from modeling our merch. That's right. Amir Richards. Amir, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on the show. <laughs> Amazing. Of course, man. Amazing. I'm actually excited to be here. So we're uh, we're here to break down the beef. Look, we've had a lot of uh, a lot of our audience members listens to, I, I feel like, similar music that we do. You know, uh, gotcha. Kendrick, and, Kendrick and Drake beef has been a sort of uh, defining cultural moment recently. Oh, cultural absolutely. Phenom. Everyone's it, talking about it. Taking over the world. Yeah. Taking over the feeds everywhere. Artists a- at the top of their it. game. My girlfriend was saying the beef has even made it to gymnastics Twitter. Yeah. So I, I think I can say that this thing is very much uh, all encompassing culturally. Yeah. And if you if you don't know what we're talking about, you got some homework to do. Uh, first, go back to what was it 2011 and listen to Control <laughs> with, <laughs> with Kendrick Lamar and Big Sean. Oh. Uh, that song isn't officially released, so you'll have to find it on YouTube. <laughs> exactly. uh, no, if you actually if you want to catch up on it, um, you got an album's worth to go through. Start with first person shooter. Head over to like that, and mm-hmm. then listen to basically all of the disses that they've dropped, including Seven Minute Drill. Uh, people will will dismiss it because uh, J Cole took it off streaming, but it's an important it, uh, fold. It, it, people could say it's not a part of the direct dialogue, yeah. but you know what? It was a part of the moment. You have moment. to know about Seven Minute Drill, so then you're disappointed when he apologizes. Later. Yeah, you exactly. gotta watch the apology and then, video. And then after you listen to Meet the Grams, you can be happy he apologized Absolutely. after. Mm-hmm. Cole, but this will, uh, I do Cole think it's important to, uh, precise, I do think yeah. it's important to preface this. This will not be a comprehensive breakdown in no. history of the beef. No. I, we don't have time for all that. Mm-hmm. This is simply our takes and minor analysis of what's going on with maybe a little bit of political implications because you know that's what we do here. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I don't, I don't really know how to approach this because like you said, we're not going to, there's other YouTube channels that'll do a far better job. Yeah, what's at, the beef? Yeah, that at breaking out everything than we can. Um, I, I'm sure we all agree Kendrick won. At this point, <laughs> well, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Two hundred percent. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar is the one. I I don't. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any more direct disses. They probably carry on the beef and like subliminals and future albums and stuff like that. Exactly. Drake is already posting AI generated images on Twitter, talking <laughs> yeah. about how he's conceded and it's going to be a good summer. I, me personally, if I was just psychologically broken down and eviscerated at the level that Drake was, it would not be a good summer. I you, I'd probably hide for a couple of years. You guys think the subliminals are done? No, no, they're going to keep going. I don't think the subliminals oh, yeah. are done, but I think like the the shot for shot beef may be done. I don't know. There are popular I theories agree. saying that Kendrick might drop something tomorrow. Mm. I don't know how credible those oh, that theories would suck are for, for the sake of this. Yeah, episode. that's what I'm saying. So you know, this is th- recorded on Sunday, May 12th. This is okay. very important. But recorded on Sunday, May 12th at 2:31 p.m. In case something drops later tonight, because you never know. You mm. never know. Kendrick drops on a random Tuesday. Right? Yeah, and also there's the uh, the Twitter account Ebony Prince 2K24 that's been saying like Drake has until noon on May 13th to to say something or yeah. or take back his his uh, position that stuff was stolen from him. Whatever. Look, it, if something else drops, just know that the most that we've heard is up to the heart part. Part six mm-hmm. uh, in terms of beef breakdown. If, if something drastic changes um, or something drastic happens, somebody dies fucking like Tupac and Biggie or something mm-hmm. like that, then we'll we'll come back and make another episode. Let's, yeah. let's hope not. Yeah. Let's, let's hope, not. hope yeah. not for sure. Um, I guess to, to start us off, favorite songs from the whole favorite beef? Favorite songs? Y- y'all got a favorite song, favorite verse? It's got to be Not Like Us. It's okay. I, <laughs> been not like us too many times. But that actually won the beef for me is Meet the Grams. Yeah. 
I can I can agree with that. I'd have to say not like us. That's the song that's been like I guess sticking in my head. Like that's it's it's the best song from the beef. But if I if I'm thinking about things like what what am I going to be playing? What's going to have longevity within my playlist? It's going to be push ups and like that. Honestly, because I I Mm. just personally cannot see myself returning to songs that are throwing out such heavy accusations uh, when I'm at work. Yeah, yeah, I can't find myself like bopping to meet the Grams too much because exactly. that song's like legitimately horrifying. But yeah. for me, I feel like my favorite one's probably Euphoria. Euphoria, just because Kendrick goes through so many different characters uh-huh. and there's so many memorable lines, so like the, keeping the, a family, Crody, Crody lines, and <laughs> uh, just so many different bars that are just gonna stick with me for a while. It's I definitely good. think Euphoria has the best longevity. Actually. Yeah, U- Euphoria. It took a while for me to come around to it, but honestly, it's it's already in the t- in, in its two weeks. It's aged like fine wine. Yes, uh, honestly, like every time walk. I. Live listen to it it just sounds better yeah kendrick being a hater like that, that that's me you know i felt like he was exactly. speaking to me i felt like i i was involved kendrick making me feel like i've never hated anyone in my life 60 uh 616 in la is also pretty slept on i like 616 that's a good LA it was never officially released uh maybe it will be at some point but i thought that one was pretty good um and then i feel like the most slept on track out of all of this has got to be family matters 100 feel like people agree. do not talk about that 100% one 100 agree and it's it instantly got over it had it had 20 minutes in the limelight yeah and then w- the song itself and the information brought out with the song and pretty much everything that Drake, Drake did and was immediately overshadowed by Meet the Grams and how fucking disturbing it was. And because he dropped 30 minutes afterwards, yes. it yeah. took over. But I feel like the allegations in Family Matters still aren't as... They're, they weren't as powerful to stick in the first place. Like, people are still doing research, do not get me wrong, yeah. like, on if, you know, these allegations are true but i think kendrick had planned for this Mm -hmm. kendrick definitely knew that drake would bring up these allegations and so he was prepared for this which is why he had meet the grams ready and i'm sure he also had not like us ready for his uh victory dance absolutely yeah Um, Yeah. that's that's kind of my problem more broadly with this beef is i feel like i feel like the three weeks between like that and drake's response he was also preparing uh family matters Mm -hmm. which you can tell because at the end of push-ups it's the beat that leads into family matters wrote a video produced a video yeah he made a video of him crushing the van and stuff and then i feel like in the time that kendrick took between push-ups and and euphoria he was also preparing meet the grams and probably part of uh not like us as well so i feel like a lot of it was was canned in a way that didn't allow for their at least kendrick kendrick for the most part didn't allow for him to like address the specific disses that drake brought up drake did a little bit of this too but i feel like i feel like Drake did a better job flipping the lines like the 20 V one line or the Pharrell line or the Mike Jack line. I feel like he did that better than Kendrick did just because so much of what Kendrick was dropping, he already had planned in advance, that which you, you could argue that is a sort of a diss in and of itself. Yeah. Cause Drake or Kendrick was being, was accused, accusing Drake of being the master manipulator, right? Playing the narrative. And in a way Kendrick was doing that the whole time because meet the grams completely overshadowed family matters, regardless of how good family matters was. Very true. Yeah, I also so sort of meta diss. Uh, although, if we are talking about the way that they've flipped each other's different sayings, right? Like Kendrick coming on like that, it's a K with all these nines. You're gonna see Pet yeah. Cemetery for all the dogs getting buried. The Prince Mike Jack things. Right. I think the best one out of the entire beef was on there, not like us, where Kendrick flips the entire um the the entire like Atlanta breakdown. Yes, yeah, because that good. is all a response to Drake bringing up uh you know who really bang a set. You know what I mean? It's yeah. all a response to that and saying, well, actually, hmm, yeah. I feel like Kendrick, Drake, I think Drake had the better flips. You think so? But only because he was on the defensive most of this battle. Mm-hmm. This is true, he yeah. was uh, Kendrick was just coming at him with attacks and allegations this and all true. different angles. Like, oh, your crew, you have people in your crew who are, you know, pedos and stuff like <laughs> yeah. that. You, uh... And you yourself. You yourself <laughs> are a <laughs> pedo. Yeah, You're boy. hiding a kid. You're a bad dad. Yeah. Uh, this, that, and a third. Drinking problems. Gambling problems. Came for your whole family. So mm-hmm. Drake had to... He couldn't really. You, what do you have on Kendrick yeah. besides that yeah. big alleged reveal? But it's like I, I feel is, like I, I feel like I have to say this. This is all still yeah, alleged. Yeah. It is not proof that um, yeah we have a pedo. But exactly, he is a weird guy. We're not gonna say he's not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. When it when it comes to all the allegations that have been levied in the beast, there is the discussion to be had around like okay. What what is falsifiable mm, or not? Mm-hmm. Who who I guess has the burden of proof when it comes to these things? But I also think if we if we're kind of getting into it outside of the beef and these two pr- 
pers- their personal hate for each other. There is kind of a weird thing where victims are not centered in kind of any of this. Mm. And I-, I-, I think that women are just really used as props to kind of make fun of the other guy. Yeah, that's like the mantra for a lot of hip hop rap battles is that the biggest loser is always the women involved in the stories. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that's mm. that's always how it goes. Um, and also at the same time, I've seen a lot of people bring up the the fact that it seems like Kendrick was just sitting on this information. Yes. Which, you know, you can make an argument. Maybe Kendrick felt like the police wouldn't do anything. You know, uh, Drake is not an American. So maybe Kendrick doesn't have any connections with like mm-hmm. Canadian police or anything like that. But it does feel kind of strange if he does have receipts and proof to just not say anything until you get into a rap battle. Until, yeah, until the guy like attacks you. Yeah, especially because these allegations are so serious. If it was just a kid, I would understand. Mm-hmm. But there's some clearly far. He's saying OVO is like a sex trafficking ring. I feel like multiple people it's not just Kendrick that knows about this sure yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. well it's like Uh, the diddy shit right exactly (laughs) exactly it's just so many people are on the inside that you have to be sure that Mm -hmm. you have all your receipts and facts right if you're about to expose somebody exactly so I feel like maybe he was gathering evidence and he didn't just I don't think he was just sitting on top of this Mm -hmm. okay yeah um because he doesn't have like actual proof but He's just confirming what the rest of the world already thought that mm-hmm. Drake was weird. And I think I think that kind of brings us into another sort of like meta narrative surrounding the beef in that a lot of the critic my my biggest thing this whole beef obviously I enjoyed the music that was coming out. I yeah. enjoyed living in the moment and being excited for the responses. But I, the, the thing that I was most annoyed about was honestly like and I I guess I don't say this like Kendrick Glazers Mm. There, there was a there was a propensity throughout the entire beef to never once give Drake his flowers for anything that he did. And to be fair, like, sure, he didn't do anything amazing. He didn't make a song like Meet the Grams. He didn't do anything like Euphoria. I, Kendrick won every single individual round. I like Family Matters and Push Ups a lot. But Drake does what he does best as an artist. He made a good song. Exactly. It's a good song that sounds good. Kendrick, and I, I just it was so annoying to see everyone come through the, the infinity entendre crowd. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And just not give anything to Drake. Yeah, I think that's definitely a pervasive problem. People kept saying, like, there's more Drake haters than there are actual Kendrick fans. Yes. And I feel like that's definitely true. And on top of all of that, I just, I, the huge asterisk for me is just the hard part six. Mm-hmm. It's just such a bad response. And it's sad because the title, the, using the hard part six as yeah. the title is is phenomenal because one, the six, it's a sort of double entendre already with Drake being from Toronto, the six. But also, stealing the name the hard part six so kendrick couldn't use it in the future is so good Mm -hmm. and had so much potential that he just fumbled because it was such a bad response oh my goodness you 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 are never gonna we talked about this a couple times if you're if you're being accused of the things that drake's being accused of in like that way you you can't just do the uh response and he really did do you have to like i don't know flip it to a to a way like to the courtroom or something like that or the no, I'll, I'll like tell the you thing. how he could have done it he should have said Kendrick you're misusing your influence <laughs> and you're <laughs> the only that's all you had to say yeah you're lying on me you're misusing your influence yeah, or just steal the line you don't have anything else on me so of course you would hit me with this Twitter narrative yes or something along those lines you don't need to say you Uh-oh. don't need to come on record and say oh if I was really a pedophile I'd have been arrested already the line that gets me is <laughs> I wouldn't too look famous to be a pedo bro <laughs> he said I wouldn't look twice at a teenager yes. like well all right dog maybe once <laughs> <laughs> yeah. maybe once oh my god it's crazy and i saw a uh, shout out to christian divine on tiktok great mm-hmm. tiktok account he said something along the lines of um yeah drake probably isn't lying when he said you know i would have been arrested if i was doing something illegal because the age of consent in canada is 16 mm-hmm. and there have been a lot of weirdos getting on the internet talking about well i mean it's like it's not illegal what drake did as if that makes it moral you can't bring up age of consent laws and expect to win no. <laughs> the, the just, instant you bring up age of consent you're done uh, yeah, check the yeah, hard drives yeah, yeah. Check the hard. Now drive. I'm really raising my eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it's bad. Um, how do we feel about the whole uh, the narrative, especially pushed by like Rick Ross, but sort of people have interpreted Kendrick's lines to mean this, but I don't think it actually does. The sort of uh, Drake is a white boy narrative that people have really latched on to. I, I, think, think, I think I thought it was funny when Rick Ross did it. I absolutely. <laughs> I think anything Rick Ross does is almost hilarious, just because he's 50 years old and he's. Re- pairs like it, it's Rick Ross. <laughs> yeah. um, but i don't really like how they latch on to that narrative yeah. truthfully mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah. i don't like how they came at each other for what they have in their personal lives because they should love who they want to love and mm-hmm. do whatever they want to do uh i feel like the only viable way is because kendrick how did kendrick kendrick basically was like 
he's ashamed of the woman that he was with. Like he was ashamed of Adonis' mom and was mm-hmm. basically hiding Adonis. That's from what Pusha T did too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, which is agreeable. He didn't come at. He shouldn't have come at Drake for being a white boy and acting this part. I don't think. Yeah, but, yeah. Are you talking about Kendrick or Rick Ross? Kendrick. Kendrick. Okay. I'm talking about Kendrick now. Uh, I didn't like how Rick Ross started it, but they yeah, yeah. they played off that narrative towards each other. I don't like how Drake came at his family like, "Oh, you like a uh, light skin girl, uh, mixed girls, and you a black activist." Mm-hmm. I thought that was dumb. Like, yeah. What What's your point here? Yeah. Uh, but Kendrick basically came at Drake for the same thing. So. Yeah. It, see, I think when we're talking about the, especially like. This sort of narrative against Drake. I think when Rick Ross does it, he's earnestly being like, oh, haha, Drake, you're mixed. Actually, you're a white boy, whatever. And I think that I can say it's silly when Rick Ross does it because it's goofy and unserious. Obviously, Drake is not white. Drake is very clearly a black man. There's very complex, like, sociological narratives when it comes to, like, mixed people, colorism, and things like that that I don't want to play into. But when I'm looking at an unserious person, it's kind of funny. However, I don't think that. Kendrick in the the lines that he said against Drake at least referring to race and whiteness is talking about Drake being white as in Drake isn't a black man I think it all really refers to Drake it's it's how Drake is appropriating black American culture yeah. and not appropriating blackness when he's not allowed to and I think you get that with a couple different lines like, I like Drake with the melodies I don't like Drake when he act tough you know what I mean yeah yeah and the part on the the colorism that I think is interesting because Kendrick and, and Drake are sort of launching similar accusations at each other, right? Mm-hmm. Kendrick is calling him the culture vulture. It's the colonizer line, right? You come in and you uh, basically appropriate the culture of whatever space you're in and then commodify it and sell it without ever paying it its due respect, yeah. right? You're just coming in and stealing stuff. And I think Kendrick says at one point uh, w- with the line where it's like, how many more black features do you finally feel that you're black enough? Mm-hmm. It's not Kendrick saying you aren't black because he tells Adonis he's a black man. It's Kendrick telling Drake, you don't think you are black or you reject black culture. And then Drake Mm -hmm. is doing a similar sort of thing where he's saying to Kendrick, you need the validation of white people Mm -hmm. to feel like you are an accomplished artist, right? Like you, you do all this activist shit, but then you need to uh, have sex with a white woman so that you can, you know, boost your self esteem. You have vanilla cream for your self esteem. And I, I think, I think the, the attack from that angle towards Drake is a little bit more salient only because people have been saying this about Drake for so long mm-hmm. that he sort of dilutes uh, or or I would say he he pushes away the elements of black culture that are inherent to hip hop solely so that he can appeal to a wider audience than he would get if he actually talked about black specific issues. Yes. Right. Like Drake Drake's honestly never mind outsold Mr. Morale, which is insane to think That's about. Ridiculous. That but I think part of that is because Drake has sort of uh, isolated himself and his music from critiquing actual issues, whereas Kendrick does the complete opposite. Right. Mm-hmm. All Kendrick talks about is issues that he's faced as a black man. That's like literally all of his work. And Kendrick could probably sell more if he didn't do that because he'd appeal to more. Let's be honest, white listeners that don't yeah. want to hear that kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I, just, I think it's an interesting fold. And so now the way that yeah. you worded that, and I really like it, um, it kind of changed my perspective a little bit. Okay. And also when uh, Kendrick, I, I forgot, when Kendrick completely like broke down the whole Atlanta thing, because mm-hmm. people were saying that like before I heard this whole diss track and yeah. I heard people saying, oh, I don't like how Drake appropriates black culture. I was talking to my, my one of my family members about it, and she was like going really in on it. I was like, I don't really see what you mean. Like, I don't agree. Yeah. And then the way that, like, you just broke it down and, like, Kendrick breaks it down, mm-hmm. it kind of makes it more apparent. But that that comes with being an artist. I think – because yeah, I would yeah. call Drake a rapper, to be honest. I he's, a, call- he's a pop guy. Like, he, he, he uses, like, rap. Or maybe he is a rapper, but he's not – he doesn't make hip-hop. Exactly. Kendrick said it best. He's a pop star. Yeah. yeah. Kendrick Lamar Can a pop a- star quit hiding? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He is a pop star, so he appeals. He's supposed to appeal to a broader audience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, that's his job. I'm not going to say it's uh, right for him to take out all the black culture in, some of, in his songs, but I think he does... He does a good job in portraying some of it, mm-hmm. but also a very bad job in falsifying some of it. Like, yeah. some of the Atlanta stuff that Drake mm-hmm. has probably Absolutely. never been through... Uh, talking about gangs and stuff like that that he's probably not in it's it's um, diluted like well, yeah, it, drake makes music that's intentionally diluted to be able to appeal to more people 
Yeah, and it will, and it's the same thing with him hopping on like British drill, right? Like yeah. Drake's got no business doing that. No, but you almost can't hate him for it because when he does it, it's not bad, right? Like That's he's what producing, I'm saying. he does it good. He's producing a, a piece of music that has mainstream cultural appeal, but he's doing it and being successful, right? But like I you, feel you like- You almost can't get mad at him for it. If that's the case, we have to be mad at like J. Cole for hopping on what? Uh, doing HYB with, with Central C. Bia. Or, 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 or yeah. that was on with Bia too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We oh have to be mad God, at him I'm for that. Booth, y'all he, drink kombucha. But I, exactly. I, I think with Cole though, Cole has so much of his music dedicated specifically to issues he faced like in North Carolina well, and racism and stuff Exactly, like Cole- yeah does the conscious thing and that's the difference that i've seen people bring up is cole and drake are both mixed they both have i think what is it white mothers yes i don't know yeah Yeah, cole and drake both have white mothers but people don't come at cole the same way that they come at drake Mm -hmm. people don't but they also grew up in different environments though. exactly cole did grow up in america he yeah, did grow yeah. up in North Carolina. He did grow up in a desperate circumstance. His music can speak to a black American experience from a place of authenticity where Drake can't. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I, but I, I was watching this um, FD Signifier video on the way over about Drake, and I think, I just, I feel like it's something deeper to a lot of people, and I, I just want to stress, like, I'm coming at this with as much humility as I can. Yeah, just yeah, open-minded yeah. here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a white guy talking about this, you know, I'm not trying to, like, say what I say is the correct take, but I think a lot of, a lot of rappers, uh, like Kendrick Lamar especially, don't, they don't hate Drake as the individual as much as they hate Drake as the idea mm-hmm. and the sort of um, position that he occupies in the culture. Because what they see when they look at him is a guy who is, you know, placed in the big three when you argue about it, but also a guy who has taken hip hop, commodified it for a broader audience, a more white audience, and taken out all of the uh, conversation on issues that made hip hop what it is. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why people like hate Drake as a first position because they, they view what that's, he's doing as, as pop music, not as actual hip hop, but he gets to play it as hip hop. He gets to pretend to be the rapper. Yes. I, I'm not saying that's correct. I, you know, and I've, I've listened to a lot of Drake's music. I like the way Drake raps a lot of the time. I think family matters is a really good track, but I, I do think that there's an element uh, of, of disdain there that goes deeper than Drake's disdain for Kendrick. Mm -hmm. That I think like, how do you even, how do you even dis against that? You know what I mean? So I, people are allowed to put Drake in the big three because it's not like, if I said, uh, the best rappers, best three, top three rappers to your head, Drake might not be in there. But Mm -hmm. if I ask you, what are your top three artists? Drake is he appeals to such a broad audience. Yeah, he deserves to be. I can't say he doesn't deserve to be exactly. Up here. If we did a poll, if if we if we did a poll across America, there would be a large proportion of the uh, American electorate. You could say that put Drake as one of their favorite rappers. Maybe it's because they aren't yeah, as deep but, in the genre. Maybe it's because they don't necessarily listen to hip hop and they're only exposed to the more pop aspects of it. Either way, he's up there commercially. But then that speaks to more of Drake's commercial success than his music necessarily being rooted in what hip hop came up as. Yeah. Yes. Well, cause I think, I think Flo Rida is like the number seven best selling hip hop artist ever. That's insane. And like, that's really, like, <laughs> yes. Well, and that's why, like, I, I don't know that we can really use commercial success or like record sales as yeah. necessarily a, a metric for that. I think Drake's like number two or something like that. And again, like I'll, I'll give Aubrey his flowers when he does well. Again, I think, I think pushups was a really good response. Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. like, I think family matters did even better for what it was trying to do. Yeah. And then it was overshadowed. But I think that, um, the one of the reasons some would argue i think that drake is so big is because he has diluted the art form that kendrick also um art occupies or works with in such a way to make it palatable to a white audience that wouldn't listen to kendrick because kendrick talks about issues related specifically to like white people in america you know yes. what i mean and i think that's i think that's like the root of why kendrick fucking hates drake and also the weird shit you know the, the pedophile allegations and because stuff like, like that. kendrick hates Drake. Yeah. And it looks like it started when okay. So I definitely did a little bit of research the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. It started when Drake's career started like in Take Care era mm-hmm. or uh nothing was the when same. When he like first pulled up with Lil Wayne. Exactly. He's he knew what hip hop was. And you could see that like he would talk about, oh hip hop is a sport. It's a competition. Yeah. Uh and in his music you could tell that it was care and craft mm-hmm. in it. To be honest, now that you think about think about Drake's last I don't even want to say uh, 
never mind or honestly was, never honestly, mind. Honestly never mind. Don't count that just because that shit it, sucked. It did, yeah. <laughs> but Jimmy Chris was that fire. was him being on a creative artist. Like this is something I want to do. I want to throw out a dance album. Uh, shit might be ass, and it was ass. I'm gonna be honest. Yeah, uh, wasn't more life a similar thing, or was that the one with Teenage Fever was like a yeah, sort of more dance life. album? Yeah, yeah, the shit feel like Teenage Fever. D- yeah. Title did not age well. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? But think of Drake's last three albums, like for all the dogs, for all uh, the her dogs. loss. Her Certified loss. Lover Boy. And those, do I listen to those because they are like club bangers that I'm going to hear yeah. all the time. It's not because it's like, he's not talking about anything. It's it's music that's fun that I will listen to while I'm playing Rocket League. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's music yeah. that's fun when I listen well, to it when we're grinding ranks. I, I think the bigger issue is like, you, you can be a hip hop artist and not talk about... Um, like you don't have to talk yeah, about like inequality and stuff like like you yeah. don't have to do that. But I think the the issue for people like Kendrick is that he he does that he does more of like the club banger stuff, while at the same time being like the biggest artist in the world. Yeah, and I think that's what really makes. And look, like to the Drake is just a human being. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? He's an individual guy for all intents and purposes. He's playing the rap game or the music game the way it was intended to be played. He's selling tracks. It's sort of a broader issue with the system where. Um, how he's selling the track. Yeah, you, you, it's a, well, it's a, and it's, it's like you, it, for any art form in America, you make it big by appealing to as many people as you can. Mm-hmm. And America is economically and socially dominated by white people. Yeah. So if you really want to make it commercially big at some point, you got to bring white people in. And Drake is just really good at doing that. And that doesn't make him not a black man, but for people like Kendrick, I think it means that he's rejected what hip hop is supposed to be in terms of like its origin in black culture. Yes, especially its roots in American black yes, culture, which yes, is very important yeah. when we consider smoking this Canadian. Yeah. So Drake is a black man. Yeah, you're not going to catch me saying white <laughs> Also, Rick Ross with the, the blatant anti-Semitism big nose allegations. Oh, That's my crazy. God, I know. And then Rick reading my Miranda rights. Oh, my God, it's man. Good. Was cool. I, I, I love the Rick Ross. This is, I love the shots that Drake drew pretty much at everyone that wasn't Kendrick. Yep. They all landed yeah. very well. Drake beat everybody else. But Kendrick, oh yeah, Metro, shut your whole ass up and make some. I don't care about BBL Drizzy is catchy and all, and they can make a beat and everything. It's not a response. But no. what did he do? He shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah. and he went to make some drums. Like you can't, you can't talk to Drake anymore. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, and it's good. And I think it, outside of the Kendrick Drake stuff, I'm pretty sure the beef with Drake and Metro is because I don't know if Metro or Drake fucked Metro's girl. I think that was the allegation with Future and everything like that. I Say what you will about that and how discourse around that again. With Women are the people who lose in these hip hop beefs. How, whatever. I think Drake's mad at Metro because Metro didn't want him on Heroes and Villains. No, mm. I think so. The thing, the way this started, he yeah. didn't really have a problem with Future. Henceforth, why they made like what uh, Wait for You and stuff like two years they, ago. They did their collab albums. He was on two albums on I Never Liked You, or right. two songs on I Never Liked You. So Metro or I Never Liked Her. is more like our generation and he's always thought that drake was weird mm. and metro, so? yes yes that's uh that's what at least what i've been hearing okay, okay? Weird. so maybe it might not be it's not from metro the source yeah but this is the general word that's going around that metro has never like like he's always thought drake was weird and the way he carries himself you know like everybody else uh-huh. uh millie Bobby brown and yeah, all that yeah, stuff. yeah yeah like a lot of people he's a weirdo and i can't lie he's i'm gonna keep saying it, he's a weirdo but future is close with metro yeah so so that's how he got in i think so that's why drake was like uh in family matters at some point he's like i didn't even really have a problem with you future i'm pretty sure well he, he says, got into your ear uh he said yeah Leland Leland Wayne, Wayne is a fucking that's metro <laughs> exactly Leland Wayne is a fucking way lame and i know he has some influence and then something about me and future never really been through it yep yeah, exactly. Okay, all right. And, and honestly, when I think about it, has Drake ever been on any of Metro's solo projects? I was just about to say. Was there he was on a, without warning? I don't know. There was. I just saw on Twitter that there was an unreleased track produced by Metro Boomin with Future and Drake on it that, that never came out. But has Drake ever just stepped on like any of Metro's things? Has Metro ever wanted to collab with him? Because that would make sense if Metro's always kind of thought he was weird. I don't. Because I can't so. think of any songs on Without Warning that Drake was on. I can't think of any he songs wasn't. on Heroes Don't Wear Capes that he, he was on, he and he wasn't. was not on Heroes and Villains. Mm-mm. That's crazy, actually. Metro I I never like thought Drake. about that. Wow. And Metro Grooming out Metro here. was crazy. And it, it was crazy. 21 Savage is also locked in with Metro. That's true. His first two albums were... That's why he hasn't said 
Yeah, I, that's why. Twenty One Savage has shit. somehow been able to stay out of this. He's been name dropped several times <laughs> exactly. by Drake. Though. Has but he? Yeah, yeah, yeah Drake he has. keeps saying like me and Savage, me and Savage. Oh yeah, he Savage, has. Yeah. He has. I mean, it's yeah, it's a, you know, they made a collab album very recently. And then Kendrick obviously brought up Savage to talk about how Drake is appropriating culture. Yeah. And look, let's not, um, you know, we can't, br- we, we can, we can bring up all these allegations about Drake and, and talk about if they're real, you know, if he actually has a daughter, but let's not forget that Kendrick did not address the domestic violence. Which, allegations. Yeah. I guess it's a good transition to kind of yeah. talk about the allegations in general. Cause we've been more talking about like different things within rap. The allegations that each people have thrown out are insane. Oh and yeah. Speaking more broadly to the beef in general, I shouldn't know any of this. That's how I felt uh, listening uh, to Meet the Grams. I was like, I, I should not be privy at, to. At the end of Meet the Grams, Kendrick said, fuck a rap battle. This is a long a life battle. Uh, it's no longer, yes. after uh, Family Matters, it was not a rap battle anymore. This It, it got completely personal. They were Absolutely. going for gutter blows only. Um... This is straight just disrespect on the other yeah. person. And while I think Drake absolutely started it by bringing up Whitney in future Kendrick's fiance, it, in push-ups Kendrick's fiance, I, I it, this it to me going through it, it felt like this really turned into you go low, I go lower situation, and mm-hmm. we especially see that from the transition to push-ups to all the way to beat the grams, or I guess family matters because euphoria, and then family matters. That was another escalation, and then meet the grams. The escalation that was the red button. If you ask me, if anybody's talking about a red button, and then we had Drake in the heart part six attempting to escalate things, but really just escalating things in a way that reflected worse on him. That's mm. what I'm saying. That that uh, a heart part six. We also forgot to mention Drake bringing up the fact that Kendrick or Kendrick may have been touched as yeah. mm. a child. Mm-hmm. Was wrong. That is that was, was so wrong. Absolutely fucking insane. Downright that, uh, despicable villainous behavior. I'm gonna say that's not even like that's just making him remember if that was him because uh, people are saying that that song's about his mother. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's not even like something attacking him for something that he did. He's yeah. just listening to it. That's, just like yeah, that's, that's just bad. It's like, not just, even attacking him for like a family dynamic that he may be a part of. It's something not that he even could like, not control. Like the. Something that he was entirely innocent in, if it did happen, although when you listen to Mother I Sober, he's talking about his mother. And okay. the song is about how his mother, because something happened to her when she was younger, she constantly asked Kendrick whether or not something happened to him. And nobody and not believed him. If, oh, And so he said, no, 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 you just didn't believe me, but I understand generational trauma type shit. Mm, That's what yeah. Mother I Sober was about. And downright despicable that Drake would bring that up and I think that it's weird that more people didn't focus on that mm-hmm. I understand that it's really funny to go oh Drake just said not uh to all the pedophile allegations and I mean Drake shot himself in the fucking foot with that yeah, but man, to gloss yeah. over what what Drake really brought up on there was crazy and I mean I never had a high opinion of Drake as a person in general I've he's, never been too petty. involved he's in the celebrity. petty king which is why I exactly. low-key like Drake like it's funny he's <laughs> it's, funny it's hilarious when he's petty but that I, I, overall that I feel like my opinion of both of these people has kind of been brought down like as people Kendrick not as much but like th- th- this is weird I like, feel yeah. like this it, thing went to a level I don't think it should have gone I think it's gonna come with time um definitely to find out more answers because who knows if these things are true about Drake yeah yeah, yeah. except that it, meet the grams you can't say that he's not uh well, he doesn't have a gambling problem, uh, a <laughs> drinking problem. Yeah, these are things he raps about. Th- these are things he talks about all the time. So he's literally just coming at him for his character. But other than that, like these allegations, I you can't really, mm. you don't really know anything. Mm-hmm. So it's all up in the air. It, it is proven interesting, otherwise. especially when you get to they not like us. The Baca got a weird case. Why is he around? Certified lover boy, certified okay. pedophile. You Except know what Baca did? What, it, it, wasn't he in jail for... Uh, Rape or something like that? Sex trafficking. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's he was crazy. he was allegedly he it was domestic violence and sex trafficking. So it was he he had assaulted his girlfriend what? and he was allegedly keeping her under uh, precarious circumstances that lead but to sex trafficking. Kendrick has tracks with Kodak Black. Like, what that's are we what talking about? That's another like broader critique. It's and just hypocrisy, I guess. It's just <laughs> speaking to the allegations. Mm. Nobody really brought receipts. If I'm honestly to believe anything i would believe that there are members of ovo doing sex trafficking things that just kind of comes with rich and powerful people unfortunately i I think kendrick doing a track with uh kodak black kodak black my fault kendrick doing a track with kodak black given that would still be it's still pretty bad 
is different from having people from keeping people around you mm -hmm. and paying them money sex mm -hmm. offenders and like because yeah. you don't have to have those people around you Yo, you, just absolutely. Don't. you don't have to be friends with these people but that, there's the all. argument you don't have to have Kodak Black on the album. That is I, true. I will engage with it on the terms that it's presented to me. Mm -hmm. When I listen to Mr. Morale, I understand the idea and the intent behind Kodak Black's inclusion. I don't agree I, with it. I think we could have had really anyone else who's done anything that's like less bad and still have the same message. I understand how it ties into sexual trauma, but we don't need to bring in a person who has invoked and not invoked, but in done imparted yeah. sexual trauma onto yeah, another somebody. person in such a violent a way that was proven in a court of law. Yeah. I, I don't think we needed to do that, you know? Yeah. It's, it's definitely an interesting circumstance when you talk about these. And I also, I think it's interesting that narratives online were surrounding Drake needs to address the uh, pedophile allegations, the sex trafficking allegations, but not that Kendrick needed to address anything. Yeah. And that's not to say that it's true or I necessarily believe it. But it is weird that there's such a uh, double standard. And I guess so, that's where we get that there are more Drake haters than Kendrick fans. I think it's also, that's that's also a little bit different. You think because so? Because the pedo allegations are going on like. They've been like, going on forever. Exactly, yeah. forever. They've been going on for a minute. Drake exposed something that happened in possibly 2014. And. You could tell there has been not the he's talking about the 2014 case at the Hard Rock Cafe. But what he's talking about when he says the um, you hired a crisis management team to clean up the fact that you beat on your queen. He's talking about that happening in at least in the present or near present. Because mm. really? that's Are what he's sure? bringing up when he says, why did you get a penthouse in New York? Why did you move to New York five months ago? Like, blah, blah, blah. You and Whitney are having marital issues. Like, why is that going on? Maybe it's because you're doing this awful thing. Yeah. And I think it's Which weird. True. I, and, and it's like, I, I don't know, because it's, I feel like it's weird in parasocial to be engaging with this, but that's kind of like the cultural moment that we're in anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, everyone's doing it. That doesn't make it right. But it's weird that people aren't at least attempting to hold Kendrick account. And I think part of it is because of the way that Kendrick has been able to control the narrative throughout this whole time. People that didn't have time to digest Family Matters. And Family Matters is where the domestic violence allegations really came out. And because Kendrick immediately silenced it with Meet the Gramps, rapid escalation and crazy track, by the way, and then followed that up the next day with They Not Like Us, he double, triple, quadruple, quintupled down yeah. on the pedophile allegations and made it catchy to call Drake a pedophile. But I also think that's the the same reason that that's dying down is the reason that the daughter allegations are dying out because because they're that, unfounded. There nobody can find anything. Yeah, yeah. Which is why nobody's really talking and, about it. Which, yeah, I was just gonna say I, I also think that like in the realm or uh, relative to the other claims, the daughter things like minor compared to Drake being an actual pedophile and Ovio being a sex ring. You know, uh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and. Ovio being a sex ring is already like what Baca's. Baca's he's got some questionable cases. That was that was Who an individual thing. Very some. questionable though. Everybody's already had this mindset of Drake, so it's just kind of like, hmm, what's really going on mm -hmm. here? So that's an easy narrative to mm -hmm. focus on. The other two, you can't really find anything about it. So it'll just have to. You'll have to find out over time. Like I said, it'll. Well, it's also Kendrick has on his side the fact that people have been thinking Drake's weird for years. Which that's true, 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 and yes, and yeah. not that many people think Kendrick Lamar doesn't. He exactly. like Kendrick Lamar he, he, stand to himself. Yeah. He keeps like to himself. Phone. He lives a very private life, and Drake's have videos that have resurfaced. Everybody has been throwing out when when Millie Bobby Brown shit first popped off. Like people were talking about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like this is a weird behavior that Drake is engaging <laughs> well, in. The, wait, a uh, comment under Billie Eilish is <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what did he comment under Billie Eilish? I, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he had a weird thing for Billie Eilish for a while. Oh, uh, that's it, it, it that's was a fucked. comment under one of her Instagram. Instagram post and I think it was either can't wait to turn 18 or she was turning 18 oh and my was like God, finally or something like that under the insane, comments insane bro and it was some thirsty stuff <laughs> that's fucking insane and so I, I guess that kind of leads us into um the the claim from Drake that Kendrick got finessed on the hard part six where he's saying we fed you the information about the daughter and saying that like we planted the uh, all the information you got that was like and the the cover art for was it Meet the Grams? Meet the Grams, yeah. 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 Um, if that's true, I feel like it's a pretty big deal for Kendrick to get like finessed out of out of a bar where he's making an accusation you have a daughter, but he was actually fed misinformation. Yeah. But I, I he Drake hasn't proved that. I, I feel no. like. And again, as people have pointed out, it's the kind of the easiest thing to prove. If yeah. you're going to plan something like this, you think you would document the process of you planting it? But but listen, I think it would maybe it would discredit the daughter thing. 
Absolutely. But yeah. Kendrick makes a lot more points in mm-hmm. Meet the Grams than just the daughter. I feel like I don't want to say that's a minor thing. Well, yeah, he's coming at his just family. You like, should die. That's true. You and should he, also, die. he also says you have other kids that you're hiding that you mm-hmm. just yeah. don't want to admit. Which it's like, um, not to be parasocial, but it's like, I don't really believe the claim. Like, I don't really know if I believe that either. Because but. of what happened with the Pusha T and Adonis situation, like the way that the Adonis reveal was supposed to happen through an ad campaign with Adidas. Say what you will about that, but he was gearing up to reveal his son. He had been an active father in his son's life. From what I've seen, his him and his baby mama are very much like... Good it's terms. amicable. Yeah. They're on good terms. Drake is very involved with Adonis's life. Adonis is in his is music. He incorporates him into a lot of the things that are going on. Like, I don't necessarily believe those claims. Oh, Drake is not a deadbeat dad. I'm going to say yeah, that right I, now. That, I think that, so, too. I think that's claim. fair to say. But, I mean, sure, it's Adonis, a rap beef. We can mischaracterize when people. I, when I saw Drake and Cole in uh, Cleveland, Adonis did come out. That's he was so in the sick. Building. Adonis, Adonis generational representation for us quarter mixed folks. <laughs> <laughs> He is generational right representation now. for people yeah. like me, man. The worst part I about Adonis is he's part French. <laughs> <laughs> his mom is French. She's, I think she lives in France. I don't know anything about his mom except that she's a she was a uh, adult star, adult yeah. film, star. Uh, adult yeah. film star. Nice. Yes. 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 And that's cool. So it's well, like I don't necessarily believe the deadbeat dad things because it's like at least what we see as the public, he's very involved. I don't know the extent to which it is. Maybe it's performative. I don't know. But, but. yeah. Having yeah. uh, sex trafficking and all this other stuff around your kid. Yeah, that's fucked up. That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty bad. That's bad Drinking dad and behavior. gambling and drugs and all this shit around your kids. I don't know. That's that's bad dad behavior for that's sure. That's bad dad behavior. But I, I think the, the deadbeat allegations fall flat. And I do yes. think this puts us in a position to kind of talk about another issue that I've had from, I guess, the Kendrick side of things. Where it's the moral superiority or the high horse that Kendrick has come at the situation and that Kendrick fans have allowed him to come at the Mm. situation. If what Drake says is true about how you left your family in L.A. and you moved to New York to allegedly live that bachelor life, although he may just be doubling down on the you like to cheat with white woman thing with that. I think it is true that he did move to New York away from his family. There are issues He's not waking his son up every day and teaching him how to pray, doing all these things, doing all that. Like there's a there's a high ground that Kendrick has come at things with that people are refusing to kind of engage with. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You know, that could be true. But yeah. he might not be doing it, you know, waking his son up every day exactly, but that doesn't mean he still doesn't go out to see his he might oh, yeah, be no, in New York. I, I don't I don't think Kendrick's a bad dad either. I'm just saying like if we're gonna levy these type of accusations, you don't have the happiest like situation going on. You don't have the best superiority to be levying these things against yeah, someone else in the character. And Kendrick them. talked about a lot of like the the cheating issues he had on on Mr. Morale and how him and Whitney say have grown from that. Those. Mm-hmm. But at the same time it's like okay you were open with it, you've talked about it. It is strange to like talk down on somebody else when you did similar things like Kendrick obviously didn't do the pedophilia stuff that he's accusing Drake of yes but like he you know he talks to Drake about like you know fucking a lot of different girls and stuff like this so it seems like I mean (sighs) if you know if we're doing the same things I don't know and that's the thing is again speaking to the narrative because my biggest issue with the beef is the motherfuckers on the internet dude it's just (laughs) it's the Kendrick Glazers because I've seen a lot of people talk about anything that Drake has levied as maybe Kendrick's not the good person that people claim him to be is he addressed it on Mr. Morale one he absolutely did not address uh, he addressed cheating I was gonna say you can't really say he addressed it because you have to dig really deep to know that 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 is about Kendrick and it's like he 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 addressed it on Mr. Morale he addressed the cheating thing on Mr. Morale he talked about it that was an active part of the album about Kendrick's personal growth that he's least trying to portray in this narrative that is the album this semi-fictionalized narrative and he's addressing that maybe he's not the best partner and things are going on like that yada Mm -hmm. yada yada that is very different than domestic violence and things of that ilk that is very different than you having personal issues within your marriage going on right now especially since Kendrick seemed to present it as if he has worked through them or is actively working through them maybe he is I think it's kind of despicable to on Drake's part within the rat beef, because a lot of this, there is, a lot of what's going on is just morally questionable. It's kind of despicable to get in between a victim and their perpetrator's process of reconciliation in any way, shape, or form. Mm. And that's really what Drake is doing by hammering this Whitney that's line, hand, hand, hammer, hammering home the fucking, uh, you have vanilla cream to help your self esteem things. As much as it sounds good in my ears, <laughs> it doesn't sit right in my heart. <laughs> 
but I just I I can't I can't sit with the idea that what Kendrick addressed on Mr. Morale is completely applicable to the things going on here, mm. and simply because he addressed it doesn't mean it's not a thing that Drake can necessarily levy against him because we can say again Drake raps about gambling, Drake raps about fucking a lot of women, Drake raps about doing drugs and all of these things. That's if true. we can't use it for one, we can't use it on another. Like yeah. I I say this as someone who's again engaging in the beef on the terms is presented to me. <laughs> there, there, there are meta narratives here as well, but yeah, yeah. Um, so it it, it seems like uh, I, Top Dog tweeted out the other day. Top Dog Entertainment is Kendrick's label or previous label. It, yeah, it's the old label. Uh, Top Dog Kendrick would, had been with Top Dog for a long time. Drake's initial diss of Kendrick was that when Top Dog says drop, you drop him, give him fifty fifty percent. Uh, you're basically diss. owned by Top Dog, is what he said. Amazing diss. I wish it would have stayed there. Um, and you know, maybe maybe that diss has some truth to it because Top Dog tweeted out that the beef is over. <laughs> like, why are you deciding this for Top, Kendrick? Top Dog said, like, the battle is done. Now we're moving on. Um, it seems like Drake kind of waved the white flag on Hard Part Six, but Kendrick could have easily responded with something. Mm-hmm. Um, I was it seems, say, like, it seems d- like that's the end of it. Uh, Drake still he waved the right flag regardless. Even if Kendrick does drop, he said. Basically, at the end of Hard Part Six, he's not dropping again. Uh, he like, gave a speech. Yeah, you can drop and it's like time. it's like because we we've gotten like so far in this beef and the way that it's unfolded. I, I really, I really do want Kendrick to keep dropping. <laughs> and and it's also body. it's also like if you're like levying these crazy accusations want- and you're saying, "Oh, I have more." He said on was it they're not like us. The rabbit hole is deep. I can go deeper. Mm-hmm. Why are we not going deeper when we're talking about such serious things? Why, why are we why are we holding some things back? I can understand you want to hold things back until, like, I guess the beef to get the proper platform to air these grievances out. But now that we have that platform, why are we waiting for other guy to respond? Especially when he already responded and was was, was genuinely evil in making mm-hmm. fun of you you and your mother and the things you did. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, that, that does warrant a response. And also, again, Kendrick never said anything about the domestic violence accusations. He didn't Which even is like, say no. Man, just he, say no. Just say you didn't do it. I'd say he could allegedly he he could drop again. Mm-hmm. Well, no, I mean he could drop again, and we could have our foot in our mouth like tomorrow. Right? Yeah, this is like, no, he there's could a drop rumor again. that he'll drop tomorrow. But the thing is, like, I don't feel like it would definitely be like the nail in the coffin mm-hmm. type. Um, maybe no, I don't think Kendrick would get on the track and talk about his family and the personal things he's got going on in his life. Yeah, uh, even if he's not with Whitney right now, just because he's in New York doesn't mean that he was beating on her oh yeah, no yeah, absolutely yeah. it there, doesn't there it there it means they the could be having is issues there. it That's also true. means they couldn't be having issues and he's doing artist things like some so whatever works for mm-hmm. couples works for couples but i'm just saying like the narrative as it's presented could point some way shape or form whatever it'd absolutely. be nice if kendrick just said of course i'm not doing that which is what drake should have said instead of i'd have been arrested if i was fucking yeah. 15 year olds i think it was uh schoolboy q who was like answering some questions about the the beef and he said something like uh, Kendrick's got additional diss tracks or at least concepts of diss tracks if Drake ever says anything again, which could be true. It could just be glazing and saying like, oh, yeah. he's got, you know, five extra back five. there. That I mean, he's, he's got one, two, three, four, five plus five. Yeah, it, it could just be that. But it seems like it, I feel like to, my intuition is telling me that this will just the beef will continue. They'll keep hating each other, but it'll just be through like minor little disses and subliminals on on future albums. I don't think it's going to be major diss tracks anymore. As as fun as it was, as fun as it was. I'm going to yes. be honest. I wish Drake came at the Hard Part Six a lot differently. So Absolutely, one hundred percent. Maybe at least made it uh, through a couple more shots at Kendrick. Defended himself a little bit, but made it a banger to where Kendrick had to respond. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's or just like doubled down on the wife beating allegations. He it, he sounded like he didn't want to be there. Like Every, the way he was yes. rapping, it was just low energy. Everything about the heart part six was just wrong. Yeah, it started off okay, and then he hit that mother eye, mother eye, insane. Well, yeah, and like the the finesse got me. You know what I and mean? The finesse like, got and, me and too. We were we were in the group chat talking about, I it, and I was like, I I thought Drake was up because uh, of the the accusation that he planted the information, but then I you know I listened to it a few more times. And I'm like, this is just bad. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. I don't like the the finesse part that he had in it, only because he before he even says the uh, like we played you and fed you that information. Yeah, he says. Whoever gave you that information is dumb. <laughs> yeah. Saying that there is a mole in OVO, uh, basically. So Kendrick has an inside man. Mm-hmm. Basically, that's yeah, what he's sure. saying. Yeah, and yeah, even yeah. if he fed him the daughter information, 
what the, what that doubled down the rest of the information that Kendrick said. Like mm -hmm. he has an inside man. Mm -hmm. So even if the daughter thinks not true, this makes me think everything else is even more true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah cuz if he if he has a mole and maybe he fed him some information, that doesn't mean the mole didn't let anything true get out. You know what I mean? Like the tr he could have said some true things. Mm. But then again, there's not really things that Kendrick levied that we didn't know outside of the daughter thing with I don't I don't really believe anyway, just mm. purely based on conjecture. I just I just don't yeah, believe I, it. You I don't know think what it's, I mean? The because thing again, be real. we've known about Drake being weird. To say the least, we've known about Drake being weird. The sex trafficking is genuinely new information, but it's not information that you wouldn't know but if you went digging. I feel like before it was all like it was real speculative. Like I could look at you and be like, yeah. "Are you serious right now? Like you really like he? He could just be a cool dude trying to help people out in the industry." I could, oh, I, could with I the culture probably would have. Yeah, yeah, I could probably would have actually looked at you and be like, "Yeah, bro, y'all are looking too deep into it." Well, now that there's somebody yeah. also in the industry saying it, and what? It, also, he played. I like how Kendrick played back to Cat Williams, and I'm trying not to like. Try not to Kendrick Lay's here. Yeah, but, yeah. no, I, like, no, no, I get it. Back I, to Cat Williams, my and, yeah, and Cat was like, "Oh no, I know some dirty ass shit that's going on in the industry." Yeah, because a lot of people are dirty. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's playing back to that, and like, yes, a lot of people are dirty, and Drake is one of them. Yeah. Like, y'all, y'all allegations are right. He be at the P Diddy parties, y'all. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's he's one of the the guests. He's got a guest room. He's got a Diddy guest mansion. room at the Diddy Mansion. Is insane work. <laughs> yeah. That that's the way I I usually see Drake defended is like oh he's just trying to help other artists and it's like there there is genuine merit to that Drake, Drake I could have said it Drake before, revitalized before Migos beat. career yeah. like Jake revitalized the Migos career he's the one who really put them on after um he hopped on the remix of something I think it was before Culture dropped uh, he gave Future his first number one oh, all of Rick Ross's number ones are you know from what I'm Drake. talking about yeah like all of Rick Ross's number effect, ones yeah. Drake and like that was a very that's mutually beneficial relationship Drake and yeah. Future Drake genuinely helped boost Lil Baby's career there are people Would that kind of what? get left in the dust like which Black is why JB, but I actually I need to circle back to Kendrick yeah. exposing the whole Atlanta trick thing yeah it's not like uh Drake just came to these artists and took everything away from them and mm -hmm. their whole style and stuff like that. It was a mutual benefit. Like Drake's learning mm -hmm. something and the, yeah. the artists, future Rick Ross, Lil baby, um, ev almost everybody that he's mentioned, Drake, is literally he's a hit maker. You put him on your song, yeah. you're going number one. He's the hit maker you depend on. He's the hit maker <laughs> you depend on. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. I think that's the other side of the coin where Kendrick and Kendrick's crowd could say like, "Oh, well, you're colonizing, you're exploiting these artists." Drake would say, "Well, I'm I'm clearly helping them. They're bigger now because I got because on track of me." With them. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. and a lot of it is like he is genuinely just hopping on tracks for free. There's things like mm -hmm. that. I wouldn't be aware of the UK scene if it wasn't for what is it War off of a uh, Dark Lane demo tapes. Yeah, and he did another. He did it was something freestyle that he did with another. Five E Sosa viral yes, movie. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna clip mm -hmm. it to Wooski. Mm -hmm. All the demons looking. <laughs> those, it's those good. Fun songs, yeah. Exactly, it's good. Like he he does help out other artists. Like there are two sides of this coin. I think that Kendrick's right, but I also think that the people who are defending Drake in that aspect are right in their own way as well. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's not an all or nothing thing. It's not a black or white thing. I I do feel I do have to point out though. There are some just like weird lines throughout this thing that I haven't seen people talk about. Mm -hmm. And I've I've been looking listening back to like other Kendrick things. Kendrick's got some weird opinions about masculinity. Oh, you mean when he said like uh you I can't, agree because yeah. I was listening he, he's back. got some weird opinions about masculinity, and I think that this has been glossed over throughout the beef. And it obviously is like a political I don't fuck with that. Well, it was either in Not Like Us or Meet the Grams, and I was listening to it. And Kendrick goes like, "You can't, you can't channel your yep. masculinity yep. Even, even when you're when you standing next to a woman." That was in Meet the Grams towards the end. Okay, that was weird to me. That that is weird because like, why are we why are we essentializing? Why are we doing gender essentialist things? <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? And like, there's another line. I was listening back to N95 because it's like. Honestly, what kind of put me on to Kendrick being a little weird about things, there's Louis Farrakhan on Damn, which is like, okay, like, whatever. Sure. Like, <laughs> Damn's pretty great. Mr. Morale, very personal album. He's giving his candid opinions. I remember the cancel culture bars, mm. and I thought they were on N95, so I went back to listen to N95. And he said this one thing where it's like, um, oh, God, somebody stole while I pull up the lyric on my phone. I had to screenshot it because I knew this would be yeah, relevant I, to the discussion. Gonna, yeah. I low-key think that Kendrick might have, like, uh, toxic. He's got the old toxic masculinity. I think so too. Complex going on, 
And Drake doesn't show that because what he was just uh, on a bus with. I don't know if it was like an NBA player or something, but he was like, "Twin, we be vibe." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and like Drake's just funny. Like he does and funny it's like, things. I like Drake for that. Exactly. I, like, I do too. Drake, he paints his nails, and it, yeah, he's yeah. fun. He doesn't take himself too seriously. And <laughs> I don't know. Drake doesn't have weird opinions about masculinity. You know what I'm well, saying? He 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 correctly gendered uh, Kendrick's uncle. Yeah, let me talk to the yeah. man of the house. Exactly. <laughs> oh and, my like, god, that's a, it's a diss on Kendrick because it's like you don't run things around. Here, but he also acknowledged so he must have listened to mr morale or his ghostwriters did or somebody yeah. did he must have listened to mr morale to understand auntie diaries enough to know the to understand the line my auntie is a man now and and call him the uncle and yep. because of that i feel like understanding auntie diaries is pretty much on the same level as understanding the explicit narrative drawn in mother i sober sure like yeah. y- y- you can't understand one without understanding the other and that's on like a just level of analysis level that's why i don't think and god i fucking hate engaging with this because i think it's genuinely despicable that drake brought this up I-, I think it's even more despicable because i think drake understood that kendrick's mother i sober is about kendrick's trauma of not being believed about something as sensitive as that. And I think Drake levied that to make the world question if he was actually touched as a child. Well, and I think that's why people are going to argue it's a diss is like he's, he understands what the song was saying, but then he's saying, well, I don't believe you either. Yeah. And that's, that's what the diss is supposed to be. And I think the the other aspect is that is to that is you're just saying I'm a pedophile because uh, you were you traumatized were as a, as a kid, mm-hmm. and so now everything you see is a reflection of your own trauma. Which you could say, but that I might think that's work. a dumb line. I'm going to be honest. absolutely. I, I think it's a dumb I think line so too. too. It's and despicable. The way he defends himself later, it, it just, just makes it, yeah. it, just <laughs> work. it just doesn't work. No, yeah. uh, I'm too famous to be a pedo. Yeah. And but, but, I've got too much money. I would have been caught. My, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Precisely. Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey <laughs> Weinstein. Yeah. All, and that's the thing is like. Kendrick compared Drake to Weinstein. Yes. Drake compared himself to Epstein. Weinstein abused his power. You could say he abused Hold his on, influence. Please um, remind me who these people are, guys. Harvey Weinstein was the Me Too guy. Like, he's the reason why the Me Too movement started, correct? Yeah, yeah. He was a Hollywood exec. He got exposed, basically, for um, abusing his power within the industry to get sexual favors from women who wanted to come up. Oh. Yeah. And then Jeffrey Epstein was a prolific sex trafficker of, chi- of, of kids. minors. Um, connected to people like Trump and uh, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Yes. And just, like, basically connected to all, like, the old rich politician and, and, and Drake and, compared and himself people. to one of them Epstein it, yes Kendrick see that that's where I think Drake misunderstood the things that Kendrick said I don't think he did it on the heart part six say what you will about that I only care about it because I care about narratives and how people analyze things and mm-hmm. I want to see people get it right but that that is weird for Drake to see the Weinstein line and then immediately go to Epstein because again as we just said they're fundamentally different <laughs> fundamentally different <laughs> um, Drake mm. doing Weinstein things is actually uh, incredibly believable considering that many famous people do Weinstein things mm. um, and Drake doing Epstein things is a little more of a stretch but to align yourself with that is nuts international crime that <laughs> <Insane>. would be <laughs> <laughs> but back to the bar I was talking about where I think Kendrick has kind of some questionable opinions it's just this simple line on N95 where he's the world in a panic the women is stranded the men on a run Mm. You know what I mean? It's very much a where what? are the real men? Where are the real men these I, days? Yeah, I'd have I feel to like that could be like song, a double man. entendre though. It could be like because N95 is about uh, basically people with daddy issues and parent issues and stuff. N95? Are you talking oh, about? No, f- no, I meant the whole album. Uh, the whole album? Yeah. Mr. Morale, yeah. Mr. Morale. And N95 is on that. Yeah, yeah N95 is right. on the album. He, I think he's saying like maybe the the fathers who left. Like who went to go it get the could milk, be maybe. I think it reads both ways and there's also a line on oh god I don't know what song it is where he says something about like uh if it's not like 17 then I don't want it and people were people <laughs> originally thought he was talking about 17 year olds he's not he's actually talking about like a relationship if it's not 17 years or 70 years of a relationship then I don't want it mm. and he he's got on tracks and he's been known for slut shaming before Kendrick routinely talks about these uh ho hopping women blah 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 doing all this why would I want that well and, and part of it i think might just be a broader issue with hip-hop in general you know what i mean like hip the yeah, hip-hop could be the hip-hop scene has always been uh not as much today but certainly used to be the homophobic used to objectify women certainly still does today like yeah. I, I don't know how much of those are just kendrick specific issues we can say it's bad when he does it right i think and he, i, will. I think, so I think on that aspect 
he's just being the reverse of most artists because most artists are like, oh, I got all the hoes, I got all the bitches, and I can go yeah. in here and get this. Exactly, this and this. but it's it's going so far. Like it, it's reactionary in a sense. It's going so far in the other direction where you end up being a part of the problem. You're just flanking the problem from the other end of the spectrum. You know what? I, you're you're being the fresh and fit to the uh, something <laughs> else. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you're being a little Myron on this issue. But uh, yeah. I I just think I I bring it up with Kendrick because I do think it's weird that people just kind of gloss over these lines, and I think. Kendrick's a great artist. Kendrick is my favorite. He's my goat. Like I, I, I do love the albums um, that he's put out, actually, especially Good actually, Kid, Mad City. J. Cole won this whole thing, and he's number one. I just had to say that right now. <laughs> you know, honestly, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can't say that Best J. Cole didn't life. win. J. Cole's a family man. If J. Cole didn't win, <laughs> he's at least a winner in the beef. Yes, absolutely. In the way that nothing happened. I, I do wonder if when Drake said uh, you wanted Cole, to, your brother Cole, to sit, Jermaine to sit this one out or something, that's kind of confirmation that Kendrick's camp contacted j cole and said and Yo. i did see something about that what you said something about schoolboy q mm-hmm. he also said like kendrick told cole to sit this one out and he showed uh he showed cole like four of the five tracks that he had or something mm-hmm. like that so that's that is, insane that is and then cole went to the beach and then cole went, cole went to the beach after that <laughs> and he was like all right bro let me yeah. just uh, you to fall off connect with nature <laughs> I totally understand apologizing if he if he heard like meet the Grams and not like us. Yeah. I'd, I'd apologize too. I'd be no, like, I'm so sorry. No, I'm out of there. I, I totally would be at a concert like, oh, raise your hand. If and you look, <laughs> look, let's let's put some more respect on J. Cole. The absolute discipline that he had to 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 showcase to endure like three <laughs> three weeks or a whole month of hate. Oh, he yes. was getting, yes. I was fighting for my life. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody takes my phone like, oh, is this your goat? Is this your goat uh, doing this? Is, J. Cole apologized and I was on the ride for his diss track. I can't lie. I was like, oh yeah, light work. Like it's PWC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, the, the discipline he had to have to drop that apology then just shut up. Until Kendrick started dropping like Meet the Grams and stuff, I I commend the boy. I do, I do. I really have to give him his flowers. I didn't see the vision back then, but I see it now. Hindsight is twenty twenty. It's okay. Um, this still leaves um a future Cole and Kendrick project, and they're also gonna go uh bar for bar eventually. Just not right now. Yeah. Just, this uh, this wasn't even a rap battle. Yeah. This was a personal character battle. Kendrick hates Drake. It's and not a rap battle. Genuinely, like, yeah, this is, I, I was looking back at the rap beefs of the past, right? And I was looking at the Jay-Z versus Nas beef, because mm. I know it's famous beef. With yeah, absolutely. One, one of, of the, the most ones, famous yeah. beef. You got Ethered, you know what I'm it saying? Was, Crazy looking back on Ether and hearing how often Nas dropped the F slur, but that's another <laughs> discussion for another time. However, in Jay-Z's response, he said something along the lines of, um, yeah, me and your girl, I've been having an affair with your woman for like three years. Like, I've, I've been fucking your girl that's for like three crazy. years. Which that's just like, and it's like, what do you do about that? You can't say anything. You, one, you can't say anything about that. That is so fucking tame compared to what has gone on in this like round you, of you beat or, your wa- w- wasn't uh, Pac and Biggie the Tupac sign was like that's why I fucked your bitch you fat motherfucker. I fucked your bitch. <laughs> yeah. All right, we can't we can't say that because one they both died. Yeah, yeah. No, but I was saying over like, that. No, but yeah, that's over, what I'm saying over, is like yeah. if well, and there's uh, people argue there's like tons of reasons that Tupac was killed and then Biggie after that. But yeah, yeah, there, there's um, deeper things. Than I, that. I'm just saying like that seems tame compared to Kendrick's well, dirt on Drake. And that's why I bring it up because after Jay Z said that, he went on New York radio and apologized. <laughs> Jay-Z apologized because people thought he went too far by saying that. Yeah, there's no way either of these dudes apologized. And, and, and now we have a uh, Dennis, I think you should ask for more paper. And more well, not paper. just that. He said, Sandra, sit down. Uh, I think your son I should, should die. Son should <laughs> die. <laughs> yeah, like, like wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, we, we, we've truly reached like a point where it's like, I mean, we, people we, we can't make guy. him apologize if that's what he thinks, if yeah. that's what he really. Oh, absolutely. And I don't necessarily like think that he should. I, I think things like went too far in the sense of like, I'm disturbed by the information that I am now privy to. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm it, saying? It's just the fact. So, Meet the Grams isn't something I can listen to over and over no, again. No, it's it's what Adonis is gonna get mad when he's eighteen and go into his room and play that shit, and Drake's gonna be like, "God damn it!" Um, <laughs> Drake's gonna hear, "Dear Adonis," that's what I'm saying. Not like that, or not like us. No, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I, it's, they, it's a club. Is, it's gonna be I, played at they the they club. Not like this summer. Us. They I, not I, like us. I'd like, be lying if I didn't have it in my head constantly. What's it gonna be? Out these, or, 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 or that 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 stretch where he's like. Uh, finish it like another line. I walk. I'm gonna set about the park. Yes. <laughs> all eyes on me. I'm gonna yeah. set about the park. He he's spitting in that song. It's not all just. <laughs> and even though even the pedo allegations he does throw at Drake 
are kind of fun. A minor, I'm gonna get sick of that. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. But certified lover boy, certified pedophile. Die, fuck him up. I'm it's not. Getting, wah, wah, I'm not getting sick of that. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's just they, it's too catchy, know. and it like feels weird that it's catchy. You know, like I I <laughs> don't feel what, good about it. <laughs> but that's the thing about it. You're not only trying to destroy your opponent you're trying to make a good song while doing it yeah and that is why kendrick won is because yeah. euphoria not saying push up push-ups was good mm -hmm. i can listen to push-ups multiple times but one that's not just about kendrick two i like it because how he dissed mostly everybody else the, yeah, the chorus is good i like dropping give me 50 dropping yeah. that, that's that's kind of cold but Euphoria. I hate the way that you walk the way yeah. that you talk. I hate the way that you dress. That's good. Meet the Grams. It's just Meet the Grams helped um him win it just because the way he attacked Drake. Yeah. And the way he made an individual message for everyone in the family. And he went at such a unique way mm -hmm. that it just boosted his catalog. And then not like us to drop a club banger, like, oh, Oh, you thought push-ups was going to get played in the club? Nah, they and, playing and this the, one. The fact that uh, Not Like Us is a club banger is a diss itself because Drake makes club bangers. Yeah. And, and now Kendrick's song is a club banger and it's a diss on Drake calling him a pedophile. Because it's like, Drake, I, I know I joked about it on Twitter like a month ago in the B first drop. Drake could not write Sing About Me, but Kendrick could drop one dance. You know what I mm -hmm. mean? Like, And Kendrick kind of proved that here. Yeah. And I think this kind of just speaks how masterfully Kendrick was able to control the narrative. And I think that Drake underestimated because Drake knew that Kendrick was going to go with the fucking uh, you like children like line of things. <laughs> you know what I mean? He alluded to it on Taylor made freestyle. Everybody and their mother knew that he was come at going to come at it that way. It was just how mm -hmm. I just think Drake underestimated you know the ferocity with which Kendrick would come at it. But at the same time, I feel like I'd be if, if I knew that I, which Drake should have known. Yeah. I would have had a response prepared, yeah. well, and it would have been a lot fucking better than a hard part well, six. Well, he did. I just think he did because he talked about it on Taylor Made Freestyle, which I, I thought that song was funny when he dropped it on Instagram and that was it. But as soon as he released it to streaming and made it serious, then it was kind of like, all right, let's not do this. This is corny, and it's just not a great song. Oh, Taylor Made was on streaming? It was on streaming, and then it got taken down by the Tupac Because State. it used Pac's voice. Oh, exactly. No, I'm not going to lie. I, I'm going to be real. Yeah. And I am... I would stand against using any past artist's voice. Oh, for sure. But the way Drake did it. It's funny. It's It was so petty and so yes. funny. I enjoyed it. That's why I and thought I it was hilarious. I thought yeah. it was the West Coast Savior. The West Coast Savior. Smoke I, I, this pedophile. I think that wasn't talked about enough, to be honest. Like, he was... <laughs> That was good. It was funny. And and Drake's verse at the end where it's like actually his voice isn't bad either. Not at all. But I, I do think that when he was like, um, you ain't getting away from this. Now you got to drop that age really poorly. Oh, absolutely. Because the whole premise of Taylor made is that, oh, Taylor Swift, you didn't drop because Taylor Swift dropped today. And it's like, I, that's why I think it's a hilarious song. I think it's so petty and on brand for Drake to just be dropped as like a little Instagram thing. It doesn't get released to streaming. We don't and treat this as a I'm serious be entry honest, in the disc catalog. If it stayed up in the streaming service, I think it would have been a much bigger argument in this uh i think so too mm -hmm. same thing with drake also dropped on instagram a flip on buried alive did you guys see that that I, was like the I, second I, disc I he dropped the day one, you talked about it in the group chat a little bit i listened to it like i it's not on streaming services so i can only like it was only exactly. so many quotables and stuff that i can remember what yeah. drake said from it but i didn't think they were the most i don't remember what drake said but i think the flip he did on buried alive because buried alive is the kendrick song on take care yeah yeah he flipped it like in a really good and interesting way and i it, it was just kind of a good diss like okay. that's it like it was just good but because it didn't release on streaming it wasn't entered really into the diss anthology I, I, that's what it is yeah but i i do think 616 in la counts just it it's so good and it's so easy to go back that's to another one it's i like need the to go back post. to that one i haven't went back to that one either just because it's all on instagram so like i don't yeah. even really count it I, I had to listen to it on youtube on the way over so mm. i can make sure i remembered it it's but good. it is good yeah. i like 16 in la i like how he 616 in la he does the drake title thing mm -hmm. and then he starts the song off like how drake would start a song like that's funny i i love that shit in the beef you know what i mean yeah i, I think not like us was just they not like that us. Was, that they was the petty like on top of mm -hmm. everything. But and you I, already exposed everything yeah. that this man could do. And then you drop not even, what was it, a day later? And you're yeah, just it was like, a day later. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Kendrick had to go back to back like that. Otherwise, I think, I, I don't know that people would have liked 
um, Meet the Grams being the response to Family Matters. Because he wasn't responding to the content yeah, of Family it, Matters. It, it wasn't he had a it response, preloaded. But I think people would have people would have been shocked because I was shocked the first time just hearing Dear Adonis is the first line. <laughs> I think but, Meet the Grams uh, uh, with not, not Like Us because Not Like Us is just catchy. Mm-hmm. Meet the Grams is a very strong... I, I think it would have beat Family Matters out just because uh, mm-hmm. I guess... Mm, I guess if you if I'm also including the hard part six and he like I don't really have a daughter type thing maybe that gives it a little more standing yeah. and takes away Kendrick a little bit more so if if not like us didn't drop mm-hmm. I'd say they were about even I'm not gonna lie mm. but I, yeah I mean I I think I think meet the grams and they're not like us very much work in tandem and it's it's mostly about Again, how they just control the narrative and yeah, don't give Drake a true. second to breathe and obfuscate on his neck. They ob- exactly they obfuscate the idea that Kendrick needs to address the allegations made in Family Matters because Meet me, Meet the Grams is great not only in its like contents and what Kendrick is saying and the information that he's kind of exposing, even though things like the dentist stuff has been known in a while. Drake's talked about it in interviews. It's because of the timing. The dentist stuff's funny as hell, though. Oh my god! It's Especially hilarious. I I don't know how many people have seen the TikTok with the girl dancing, uh, thinking <laughs> yes. she was invited to the Drake party, and then and she, she got yeah. Dennis. Oh she my god, man! Dennis it's, is a freak. It's just like I bet there's like some actual trauma there for for uh, Drake because apparently Dennis wasn't around, and then he comes back when Drake pops off and has a lot of money. Yeah. Oh, for and sure. And then Ken, I think I don't, I don't know if Kendrick said this or if it was somebody else, but there was accusations that. Um, Drake just takes pictures with Dennis to prove that he has a black father. You know oh, what I mean? That's crazy. Um, it's just it's it's that's, funny that's seeing shit like that TikTok video uh-huh. where it's like I showed up to a Drake party and Dennis is here. Well, that's definitely what Kendrick was alluding to when yeah. he said the thing about like, oh, you're you doing something help. great for Drake. You know, you're doing him a favor. That's why he should give you more, more paper. paper. Yes. And more, and more paper. paper. And more paper. Yeah, that's ridiculous, man. That. <sighs> Meet the Grams is nuts. Yeah, Meet the Grams is crazy. I, I still think Family Matters is good, but yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be bumping it for too long. No, mm-hmm. Family Matters, I'll probably, I, I don't want to say I'll forget about it. Like, there there will be times in my life where I come back and I listen to it's all the songs in order. Family Seven Matters minutes is, is too long. long for me to just yeah, come yeah. back to and just enjoy, just like and Meet the Grams. I feel like the, also- the beat switches in Family Matters aren't as uh, smooth as Euphoria at all. Uh, I, I I don't dislike any of the beats, and I think he does a fine job rapping on them. I just think they're too disjointed. It feels too You know different. what I would do? If I was Drake, I would have dropped Family Matters and that first section and the last section, put them together and find a better way to blend that. Well, I and mean, that, yeah, he's got three songs in there. Exactly. Yeah. That middle section about other artists, I would have took that to a, made a whole other song yep. and made it yep. a little longer. Absolutely. You expand it on who you were talking, uh, more people that were mm-hmm. dissing you. You could expand it on each person if you wanted, but mm-hmm. he, he still did a good job. Especially, again, when we just compare, like, Time Talked About within Family Matters and Meet the Grams, that's six minutes and Meet the Grams of him deconstructing Drake's character and his uh, his family trauma, really, and awful dynamics within his own family, possibly how he's bad to his kids, yeah. and then Drake is kind of just like, he's, he's kind of doing his thing, and it's not that- super focused on Kendrick. That is very true. I could only imagine like being Drake's mom and hearing that song. I think you're supposed to die. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, Cassandra, sit down. I, I need you to listen. And I think doesn't doesn't Drake sample his mom for uh, Family Matters in the beginning? I think that's it's got to be. Yeah. So like she's involved. Like she's uh-huh. listening. <laughs> you know what I mean? She is. Or the Rick like, Ross text where he was like, uh, "Rick's calling me a white boy mom," was, and he posted <laughs> that. <laughs> That was good. Some of some of Drake's like posts and corny. Tweets, they're funny, but some of them are like, "All right, bro." Yeah, <laughs> like, Drake's corny. Like that's what he is. That's who he is. That's the lane he occupies. Yeah, he's a he's a corny guy. Um, in terms of like the beef discourse, the only other thing I saw is uh, the Twitter plagiarism allegations. You guys seen these? Oh, yes. Drake is getting his narratives from Twitter. No, 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 no. Kendrick, Kendrick, and Drake. Okay, I've seen, really? I've seen accusations for both. Thank you, because that's one thing that I wanted to get into. A lot of the accusations against Drake, from what I'm dubbing the Kendrick Glazers, have been like, oh, he just got this heart part six narrative from Twitter. He's writing all his shit from Twitter, yada, yada, yada. Some of the things on the Hard Part 6, yeah, I could agree. Maybe considering information that came out on the Ebony King Twitter account, he is uh, biting this narrative. But I think that the things that Kendrick has levied have also just, again, been things that we've known about for so long. Well, it's not. I, people are citing like tweets from like 2021 or 2017 where it's like lines that seem to have been adapted for. Word for word, bar to bar? I don't know if it's, it's word it, for word, but this shit so like OVO and other yes, things. Yes, the only four oh. for Kendrick that I've seen 
were uh, certified lover boy, certified pedophile, mm-hmm. OV ho, um, a minor, and it was one more. It was the what else is at the end of the song? Sixty nine God. So nothing Freaky. like <laughs> it, it, yeah, sixty nine. So it's like minuscule parts. Hold on, it's like minuscule parts of the song that. They they add up to make the yeah. course. I feel like what you're supposed to do as an artist is take pop culture references and other things and make them into a hit. So it's not like Kendrick just took a whole verse from Twitter yeah. or anything okay. like that. And I don't know if Drake did, so I wouldn't. And I feel like what Drake said is very vague. So yeah, you're you're gonna find like some tweets mm-hmm. maybe saying, "Oh, he's too famous to be a, a pedo" or something like that. Yeah, like. Well, yeah, and if it's a crime to take things off of Twitter and incorporate them into your content, lock me up. You know, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, I feel like everybody does this. They see something and they're inspired from it. Uh, all art is derivative type shit, but I, I just don't think it's that big of a deal. I've just seen people. It, 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 people made noise about it for Kendrick first, saying like he got these lines from Twitter, and then people have found some lines in Drake disses that were like mirroring that on Twitter as well. And it's just like I don't. It's not that big of a deal. That makes let's, sense. Let's also say for the for the state that we have not stated at all. We have to be reminded Drake does not write his own music. He has it's, ghost it's, not, it's, not by himself. Yeah. Okay, he has help. Uh, I mean like he does incorporate some of, you know, his touches, I'm sure. But Drake is not it's not just him. It is dead as a one v it is Kendrick <laughs> versus all of Drake's yeah, ghostwriters. The Euphoria bar? Yes. Drake did not write all this himself. I he, think there's like there, there's there's some leeway with that. I think the ghostwriter thing for Drake genuinely does go sometimes a bit overstated. I don't know if I can pull up the song credits on Spotify here, but I think it was Family Matters or Push Ups. Drake did write all by himself. At least that's how the songs are credited. I think I think I seen the opposite. Push Ups. Yeah, I don't know about Family Matters, but Push Ups yeah. has at a least a huge like list of writers or something four like that. or five at least, and then you see Euphoria and it's just Kendrick. Mm. Yes, that is true. I did see that. I I think something at least was written by Drake, and but I know Drake can same, write, but I'm, yeah, the I'm Ghostwriter sure shit is whack. But at the same time, uh, we don't know how much Drake is really writing. This is very true. Yeah, we yeah. can't for say like Drake's writing most of this, which I'm gonna for the benefit of the doubt because I don't know Drake and I enjoy Drake's music. I'm gonna say he writes most of his songs, <laughs> uh, and maybe like. Chubbs is gonna throw in a line right here, or whoever else is gonna throw in a line right here. Like uh-huh. this can go good off of this. So, you know, they add up to make a song that they made together. But I like to think that Drake writes most of his songs. Do I, <laughs> I can I one hundred percent stand on that? Absolutely not. If somebody came to me with uh evidence, I believe it. We we could say he definitely wrote the hard parts. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I, I just who who in his team let that slide. And like, who in his team thought that was good? Does this guy have prequel era George Lucas yes men around him? Yes. Like, uh, he pays. Yeah. His, he yeah, pays. That's right. true. He pays all his friends to be his friends. Like that. Kendrick should have hit him on that. Like, yeah. honestly, BBL Drizzy is crazy though. BBL. I need Kendrick. Kendrick is making a song on BBL Drizzy right now. <laughs> I was wondering why he didn't do that because it's like it's a free it's a free thing and Metro made it so it's not like Metro would be mad. I mean at you that for did it. came that did come out after not like us. But yeah. if he did. True. That would take the, yeah. the world by storm. Yeah, if you open up the Kendrick song and it's BBL Drizzy. Oh, BBL come on. BBL Drizzy. But I don't know how much I could. I, BBL Drizzy is funny and all. And it's like, it's a lot catchier than I. When I first heard it, I was like, oh, this is like, it's cool. It's kind of funny. Ha ha. But it's a lot catchier than I thought it yeah. was. And it got stuck in my head. I go, BBL Drizzy. It's good. BBL. Yeah, yeah, the, the, the sort of Kendrick side of it with Future and Metro definitely used the. Uh, the the internet against drake on this one because usually the internet's very pro drake you know what i mean with yeah. the drake memes and you know drake's the type of guy to you know float when he smells a pie shit like that <laughs> uh but they definitely no, weaponized the i internet feel like as of late drake has been under attack They're like well certainly because of this you I mean like before I, no no before that uh what is it I kind of did money for fun. <laughs> like, that, oh, but people I, I think, think that's fun. Though. I think that's another example. I think Drake, like, even with the uh, Drake, the type of guy to float when he sees a pie type thing, it's like Drake has been the subject of a lot of like light ribbing on the internet that's for true. a while. And that's I think true. kind of the money for fun. That's and, a part and, of it. You know, part of that is probably just like anti light skin racism. Cause some people, people are actually like, no, Drake is not, don't like Drake just because of things like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I don't doubt that there are some people saying, Oh no, <laughs> some people doing the reverse one drop rule or something like yeah. that. But yeah, which is whack. Um, well, I don't, 
I'm out of I'm out of a, a discourse that I wrote down on the song. So I'm looking up else. the Family Matters writing credits. I from what I see on the Genius Q and A, it looks like it just says it was written by Drake. This isn't like an official writing credit though. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. It so no, says no. it's just written by Drake. Do I believe it? Like, what, yeah. what, another uh, big part of Meet the Grants for me. You lied about your Ghost Riders. Mm. You lied about like oh, all the, yeah, and that it's got him in the background. Yeah, and which is true. Drake has been lying to us for a very long time before. Like, we had to find out from Meek Mill that he had ghostwriters this whole... I don't know how long he's had them. Well, it wasn't that he had ghostwriters. Every rapper has ghostwriters. Like, every rapper collaborates. The issue with Meek Mill was that Drake wasn't crediting ghostwriters. Mm. And so Drake was lying about being, like, the sole person to write or a smaller team to write than what was actually happening. Which is true. But I which, also, which is wrong. I think, yes, many other artists have ghostwriters, but yeah. not as frequent or not yeah 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 not necessarily ghostwriters but every artist collabs and drake has written for kanye before drake has written for other artists before too there's like i i think the ghostwriter thing is a little bit of like internetified and like drake haterified i think it Mm. was wrong to Mm. not credit ghostwriters i think he uses ghostwriters more than maybe like other artists and artists like kendrick for example you know an apt comparison but i don't think it's crazy especially because like he's a pop guy yeah, I wouldn't, pop music. I wouldn't be surprised if Drake does have a lot of ghostwriters like on a lot of his different songs. One, because he puts out music so quickly. Yeah. Um, and Too also quickly. because just like generally like what we know of Drake, this sort of like culture vo- vulture allegations, like it wouldn't be surprising if he was the type of guy to not write a ton of his own music. Mm-hmm. Whereas if, if Kendrick was exposed to have ghostwriters, I would be really shocked. I'd be, that. Yeah. I'd, yeah. It changed my opinion of Kendrick. Or, or exactly. Same with Cole. Yeah. I feel like Drake is, dang, how do I say this? Drake is on this high pedestal um, because of, you know, the music he makes, how frequent he makes it, how often he is in the limelight Mm -hmm. dropping some good music. But people don't really, I feel like the ghostwriters are a big thing. I'm not gonna lie. Like I, a I, big deal. A, like, a huge deal. Yeah. I, and def- I totally Drake could not be it. Drake without his ghostwriters. Oh yeah, no, for sure. But I, I also think I guess where my analysis of it comes in is I don't view Drake as an artist like I view Kendrick as an artist. Mm. That's that's fair. You different I mean? expectations. Exactly. Right. So I have different expectations for Drake. I could say that Drake, maybe if I don't want to say he's a great rapper, he's a great performer. That's true. If J. Cole has some ghostwriters, I'd actually that made me look at him d- very differently. And, I, so. and I'm in the same boat too. Because I, I I'm gonna have different standards for different people just because it's about the way that they present themselves. It you is. know what I mean? J. Yeah. Cole having ghostwriters would be crazy. Yeah. I'd I'd have a hard time believing that. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully J. Cole does man. I'm glad I'm glad J. Cole stayed out of this. Cole the goat. <laughs> I, I, Cole the goat. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't need Cole Drake and Kendrick to all be buried underneath all these accusations. Yeah, this is this will really make me uh, go back and appreciate Cole's discography I, a little more than I did. I was gonna say I hope the only thing that the only dirt that Cole has on him. Because I've also been hearing on the other side, like maybe maybe Cole jumped out of it because he's got too much dirt on him. Like mm. he didn't want to be exposed. No, nah, I I wholly believe that but, that Cole was like innocent and thinking like, oh, this is just gonna be friendly competition. Yeah. And I think that's proven by like the way he handled seven minute drill. Yeah, and he's tried to you know throwing them light jabs at my guy. Exactly. But- he did not come for Kendrick's character at all. He didn't care. He's just finally like, oh, maybe this is how me and Kendrick finally make me. Cole, Cole's just blissfully ignorant. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe it. I believe it. Because Cole, Cole's the type of dude to just like ride a bike in New York with no security. That's exactly. <laughs> and he's chill be like on a, that. Be on a beach with no security, <laughs> taking pics with a fan. Yeah, he's got his MacBook and like a, a pretty thin case on the it's beach. A, for a little laptop. <laughs> and the socks pulled up. Like, I Bro. respect him. I just love Jake. He's just a humble guy. Gotta love Cole. That's why I like yeah, Cole. You know, he I'm may not guy. read. He's a he may guy. not read, but is that a sin? Yeah. Uh, yeah the, <laughs> is that a sin? The only diss track we got from J. Cole is from No Name. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, it's just, he doesn't, he doesn't, he just read. doesn't read. He just doesn't read. And, you know, if not reading is a sin, uh, I guess I'm going to hell. Exactly. You know what I'm saying, man. All right, well. What a guy. We got anything else, fellas? I don't think so. I can't think of anything off Dome. Mm. Certified lover boys, certified pedophiles. Wah, 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 wah. Well, if if the Hitto audience liked this uh, beef breakdown, uh, maybe we can we can work some more stuff out to talk about. If you guys like hearing our music takes, and we can get uh, exactly. Mr. Richards, Amir Richards, back on the show to talk about it. And uh, if if more songs drop, oh, we'll definitely have to talk. We, we might have to be called back. Songs, yeah. I would love to come back. It was an honor being here and meeting all, right. all the people and becoming official. Exactly. Uh, he's introduced to the canon. I'm no, an <laughs> I'm no longer yeah. an NPC. I'm no longer an NPC. Well, thanks for listening, everyone, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a great week. See you later.